Hi, I'm Abby from the Air Rivers Trust and today I'm going to be talking you through the history of our river, our project and what we hope it will achieve in the future. Firstly, I'm going to take you through the history of the River Air so you can get a better understanding of why we carry out our work and projects today. Back in 1690, the air was described as a river beaming with life. The quote you can see was said by Reverend Miles Gale of Keithley and the air then was known for containing fish. This paints a lovely historical picture of what the air might have been like in 1690. Full of life with dace, grayling, perches, eels and salmon and folk coming out to catch them with the blazing eye of forks like you can see on the left hand side. Moving on history, we reach 1790 when the Industrial Revolution had arrived in the Air Valley. The river provided power for the mills and a way to dispose of waste. As workers moved to our cities, the sewage from their homes polluted the river. This brought diseases like cholera to Leeds and Bradford. By 1840, the river air in Leeds was described as a reservoir of poison, careful kept for the purpose of breeding pestilence in the town. In that part of the river, extending from Army Mills to the King's Mill, it was charged with the drainage and contents of about 200 water closets, cesspools and privies, a great number of common drains, the drainings from dunghills, the infirmary, dead leeches for patients and slaughterhouses, chemical soap, gas, drug, dye houses and manufacturers sent blue and black dye, pig manure, old urine wash with all sorts of dead animals and vegetable substances and now and then a decomposed body forming an annual mass of filth equal to 30 million gallons. As you can imagine from the previous quote, the river was not in a good condition due to the sewage and waste dumped in it. However, industry was not the only thing to damage the river. In 1884, John Wood was one of the first people in Britain to grow a new plant imported from Eastern Asia. His coastal nursery, Wood's Hardy Plant Club, located on what's now known as Vespa Lane, sold Japanese knotweed plants. A respected gardener, his popular book described it as a capital plant for a small town garden, and many bought the plants for their own homes. Japanese knotweed remains a troublesome, invasive, non-native species along our river. You may recognise it from the image. It's extremely difficult to eradicate as it smothers native plant life and damages buildings. It can grow up to 10 centimetres in a day, pushing through gaps in brickwork and paving, and is mostly spread by people. We find a lot of Japanese knotweed alongside the river and spend some of our volunteering time trying to treat and eradicate it. As well as polluting the river and introducing invasive non-native species, people have also been building barriers in the river for centuries. Corn milling weirs have been on the river air since Norman times and it was the air and Carlton navigation founded in 1699 and the following industrial revolution which led to the additional, better maintained weirs being built. One of the earliest weirs is the weir at Kirksall Abbey, which was built in the 12th century and is thought to have allowed stones to be floated downstream from quarries further up the air. It is common that people adapted the river to benefit their livelihood, with food from the river supplementing the monks and their guests' main diet of bread and vegetables. They did this by building two fish ponds at the south of the abbey. Bones found in refuge pits in the abbey grounds even included ravens, jackdaws and herons. However, these weirs eventually led to the demise of migratory salmon in the air. In 1866, a speaker in Leeds found that there was certainly a river, but no salmon in it. If we went on as we were doing now, and if the population continued to increase, the day would certainly come when we would have to meet together. And someone would say, I hold up the scale of the last salmon. And another man would say, I have just got the shell of the last oyster. We must prevent that if we possibly could but it would be of no use to merely sit still and talk about it. It was very easy to talk, the difficulty was to act. We are such as this one at Armley Mills, rebuilt and enlarged in 1788, blocked salmon and their return from the sea to the river. It is at this point the air was grossly polluted and blocked from many migratory fish, and a feature that many people simply began to overlook, as the river became a burden due to the pollution and no longer containing the same fish it did before. Following on from this, the 1980s saw a growth in concern about the River Air. A campaign group called Eye on the Air drew together over 30 river neighbours, including community and sports clubs, and Tetley's Brewery to try and make a change for the river in its condition. 
Many sewage works discharged treated sewage into the river, and lots of the air and its tributaries were known for being constantly polluted. In some parts, this poorly treated waste made up 70% of the water. Little life was found except where the water briefly reoxygenated itself just below weirs. For a decade, the group campaigned for Yorkshire Water to install extra treatment at their many sewage works. Investment worth over 300 million by Yorkshire Water to the closure of many smaller sewage works and their replacement with larger, more efficient works to treat the waste from our toilets and homes. The effluent these improved works produced was now often as clean as the river itself. The effect was near miraculous. In the late 1990s, more than a decade ahead of much of the rest of Britain, otters, heron and other wildlife began to return to the river due to the improved conditions. However, aquatic life has been slower to return to the river due to the barriers and artificial changes that have took place on the air throughout history. As you can see on the map, there are lots of barriers in the river that could be a problem to aquatic life. And as pollution decreased and the population of grading and trout increased, we can see that the straightening and deepening of the river and barriers has harmed the return of native species such as salmon. Atlantic salmon are one of the most widely travelled fish in our river. Born in shallow gravel streams, they live in fast flowing upland rivers for the first couple years of their life. At the age of three, they undergo a dramatic change from a muddy brown colour to sparkling silver blue. This means they are ready for the giant migration to fast feeding grounds past Iceland and Greenland. After four or five winters, they return to Yorkshire's rivers to breed. The EA's commitments in the Humber District Plan include the removal of all artificial barriers to fish migration by 2021. And due to this, we have already seen improvements, with salmon already being spotted and caught, as you can see in the photo, at Nostrock Weir in 2010. However, there are still four weirs that are stopping salmon reaching their breeding grounds of Gargrave and Skipton, and this is where our project DNA comes in. DNA is a project aiming to reconnect 60 kilometres of the river to enable fish to breed, feed and shelter through the building of fish passes on weirs. Encourage the return of Atlantic salmon to spawn after an absence of 150 years and work with local communities to celebrate and embrace our fantastic river. At the Air Rivers Trust we have one vision for the River Air, a thriving river valued for its environmental, social and economic benefit and which is actively appreciated by the community for its diverse ecology and contribution to flood risk management. As a team we also have three key aims for the river. The first one being good ecological status of the river and its tributaries. Second, reducing risk and consequences of flooding. And thirdly, improving community appreciation of the river. In order to break down the barrier of a weir to the fish, the four weirs in our project will have a Lorinia fish pass installed onto them. A Lorinia fish pass works due to the baffles and the base of the fish pass slowing down the water and creating currents like you can see in the video. The fish can then swim and jump up through these currents. Our fish passes will also have a resting pool in the middle of them to break up the journey, with the four wheels we're working on being quite steep. Here is drone footage of the site prior to building work starting. The fish pass will be sitting on the upstream side of the river. This is because the fish will approach the weir and make their way along it trying to find a passable bit, always working upstream, therefore always ending up in the left hand corner where the fish pass will be placed. Excitingly, building work is well underway at Kirkstall. The image on the left is a visualisation of what the fish pass should look like once complete. As I mentioned earlier, these final four fish passes should open up migration and spawning areas to salmon. This map shows the spots we should hopefully have spawning areas in and their timeframes. Hopefully within the time of our DNA project by 2022, we should see salmon spawning in and up around Gargrave and some also in Hardenbeck and Gilbeck. Although the four fish passes will open up our river to fish, there is still a lot of work to be done on removing debris from the river still remaining from the 2015 floods. Helping to improve habitat with tree planting and hedge laying and educating and helping people engage with their local stretch of river. This is what we do as a trust and do during our volunteering days, events, talks and shows. If you would like to get involved in any way, please get in touch with us. We would love your help. Finally, thank you for listening to my talk today. I really hope I managed to teach you something new or make you more intrigued in our river.